Thank you. Okay, uh, guys, thanks for coming today. Uh, you know, I saw you after the game, but uh, it was a good win for, for Colorado State. Uh, any win is a good win. The great thing about it is after watching the film, I, I still think there's a ton of improvement that we can make as a football team. Uh, we'll take today and we'll go over the – you know, the good stuff, and we'll go over the bad stuff. Uh, then we'll start working on our opponent of Arkansas, who, uh, you know, we're excited to go to, to, to Fayetteville and play Arkansas. It's obviously an SEC opponent. Uh, anytime you get a chance, uh, you know, to play in a stadium, uh, an SEC stadium, our kids get excited. Uh, I know they, you know, are one and one right now, uh, just like us. Uh, and, you know, I know. Coach Chavis really well defensively. Uh, he's got his defense playing extremely hard, uh, pressuring the quarterback, running around on defense offensively. To me, watching the film, it looked like they found their stride a little bit when they went with uh, Starkle, I believe that's his name, Nick Nick Starkle, the transfer from uh, A&M. Uh, seemed to click a little bit better offensively. Uh, so, hey, we got a big challenge. They're big up front. You know, we had a hard time last year stopping the run. Uh, they're athletic on defense, and they've got some skilled players uh, in the two receivers that uh, kind of scary. So we got a big challenge. Uh, you know, the most important thing that we got to do as a football team is correct our mistakes and go out and have a good week of practice and focus on us. Uh, not, you know, I think you see a little bit more juice because you're, you know, you're playing in a, you know, a bigger environment. Uh, the energy sometimes from some of those stadiums when the stadiums are full, I think gives guys a little bit more juice. I wouldn't say it's because, uh, you know, you're playing an SEC opponent. You know, we don't have a lot of kids from, from the Arkansas area. I know they recruit heavily out of Texas, you know, but I, I'd say when we went down to Florida, the kids from Florida had a little bit more juice. Uh, but I think it's just – you know, playing one of those programs that everybody talks about, and they walk in that stadium. It's a big stadium. Uh, get some fired to, fired up to go out and play extremely hard. Coach, what are the areas you're still targeting when you see the team needs the most improvement? Uh, well, protecting the ball would be number one. Uh, you know, we're not very good at the turnover. We're awful at the turnover ratio. It was good to get a turnover uh, the other day. Uh, Bombeck sack and recover the fumble was – was awesome, uh, but us, you know, turning it over two times is not good, and then the ball on the ground. Another time, we're lucky that uh, we, uh, Western Illinois didn't recover that one. But we did have a couple fourth down stops, which are like turnovers, so they don't go in the turnover ratio. But that, you know, if you take those fourth down stops, we actually won the turnover battle on on Saturday. But number one would be, you know, is protecting the ball and, and create more turnovers. Uh, Gonna keep practicing it, you know. Uh, you know, keep keep working on taking care of the football and protecting it the right way, and then defensively keep hustling to the ball. And I think the good things will happen. Do you encourage? Do you don't feel like you're seeing the best out of this team yet? Yeah, I think I think we're we're continuing to, you know, to grow as a football team. Uh, I think the guys are know that we've got a a, a, a ceiling that. We're not close to reaching, and I think they know that we can get a lot better as a football team, you know, and because there's little things that are, you know, you, there's always things in, in a game you're, you're you're correcting, but there's a, you know, there's there's some things that if we can just shore up, I think we can be a, you know, a better football team. Will you prepare and practice the same way with worst turnovers, where you kind of set the goal for turnovers each period? Yeah, we're gonna do that again defensively. Uh, we're gonna have, you know, we're gonna have tackling circuits. We're gonna have turnover circuits, and then during the periods of uh, the whole practice, uh, when it's good on good and scout work, you got to get X number of turnovers for the day. If not, there's gonna be a consequence after practice. Uh, and then offensively, uh, our same drills that we do in protecting the ball. And uh, you know, we didn't do it pretty good in practice. We hadn't turned the ball. You know, uh, I think they've been getting the turnovers off the scout team because. You know, our one or two offense hasn't really turned the ball over. We just, in the game, we haven't protected it as well. So uh, we got to carry over what we've done in practice to the games. And then sometimes things happen. A guy puts his helmet right on the ball. Uh, but the other day, I mean, it's, you know, it's a mesh, a handoff exchange. We don't get it tucked, uh, which, is, which is not good. And then Warren uh, not getting it tucked after the catch. Uh, you know, so those are two things. As soon as you get the ball, you got to get it tucked high and tight. And, 
those two instances were not good. Yeah, penalties were not good. Uh, shot herself in the foot uh, way too much. Uh, you know, some of them were being aggressive, just overly aggressive uh, at times, uh, trying to play through the whistle. We're talking about playing hard and, and just giving probably too much effort. You got to realize that, you know, a couple of them were probably were not very smart. Uh, we'll show those on film today, and there'll be some consequences for those penalties. Um, the holding sometimes you have, and you're like, uh, you know, uh, those are going to happen sometimes. The good thing is that we didn't, you know, there weren't jumping off sides. There wasn't, you know, illegal formations or false starts. Uh, you know, I think the penalties were, you know, playing hard, but we got to understand, you know, how hard to the whistle and don't go beyond that and then get our hands inside uh, offensively. But, you know, pass interference is a judgment call. You know, those things happen. But, you know, the late, the late ones, uh, you know, we got to play hard, but we got to be smart. Obviously, playing them last year, does that help in game playing, or is there enough turnover year to year that still kind of? No, it'll be, it'll be a, you know, it, it does help. Um, you know, Coach Morris and uh, uh, Coach Craddock are, you know, they're still heavily involved. Coach Craddock's the OC, and Coach Morris involved with the offense, and you know, they're trying to do the things that uh, you know they've been working on since they've been together. You see a lot of similarities of what they do. I think they got another weapon in the receiver. Uh, the young kid, um, drawing a blank on his name, uh, is it Boyd? No, that's the running back. I'm sorry. Um, Mike Woods is the older. It's number seven. Playing the spring game. Yeah, Trey Knox. Trey Knox, a 6'5 kid out of two, that's 205. Uh, then you got a very good running back. Uh, then you got Woods, a receiver. Quarterback, I think, is coming on. So they're just trying, they're trying to, you know, they're trying to, new staff, trying to figure it out. And, uh, what I see out of the staff is they're playing hard, uh, which is which is you know something that you ought to be proud of as a coach, and you're trying to figure it out. Defensively, Coach Chavis has gone against him several years uh, as a player as a coach. You know, there's slight changes, but still very similar. Uh, you know, he's going to play a certain front. He's going to blitz certain guys, and um, he's going to try to you know cause your cause your quarterback to be uh, unsettled a little bit. Yeah, there'll be certain there'll be certain things that we'll show uh, that hurt us, uh, the things that we got to correct. Uh, we didn't do a very good job of the, the split zone, the divide zone of eleven personnel against them, uh, and then sometimes when they had their fly sweeps, I think we're more prepared for that this year. Uh, having faced uh, the team we faced last week, and then Colorado ran a lot of split zone, which we didn't do. You know, we didn't stop the way we needed to. You know, we didn't get in our gaps a couple times, so we're going to we're going to see that play. Uh, and they're going to run the motions and stuff, and then the, the, the naked bootlegs off of that stuff to try to, you know, get you out of phase. Uh, so they're, they've got some things that can that can hurt you, and will show. Uh, you know, offensively, uh, you know, I, I, I really I haven't watched much of that game. We were, we were, I know we ended up winning that game. We weren't very good offensively last year, so I try not to watch any of that. Uh, I'll see how they line up the formations. You know, it was basically KJ and Preston throwing the ball around and playing catch. Uh, we, I think we did bust a run late to Izzy that helped, but uh, I, don't, I don't really watch much. I get sick to my stomach when I watch last year. And how much more comfortable and different are things? I know you weren't calling plays at this time last year. You know, you had a lot of unsettled stuff. And now being so deep in the system, yeah, I, I, th I think there's a there's a there's a there's a comfort level between uh, myself and the quarterback, especially. Uh, I think there's a comfort level growing uh, for us as an offense. You know, because you look at our offense, there's not a lot of seniors on our offense, and there's some young guys now. Warren Jackson's a veteran. Cam Butler, Trey McBride's his second year. Uh, you know, you've got some out there, but you got some young and Marvin Kinsey. Uh, but you got some young guys playing around that we're trying to, you know, put in position, and we don't want to do too much where they can't handle. I mean, it looks like we might be doing a much, but a lot out there. But we're kind of staying, you know, pretty simple for the offensive line, uh, so we can be successful. And they're doing a good job of doing their job, uh, you know. And then when we ask them to drop back, protect, we're protecting pretty good. When we run block, run block, but we're doing enough stuff that's keeping people off balance, and they're executing. But uh, 
you know, there is a there is a comfort level because of the quarterback, and you got a guy that's a, a veteran guy. Have you seen some development in your wide receiver core? I know EJ had a pretty decent game yeah, great, great, good, good, good question. Uh, really, really proud of EJ. Uh, worked extremely hard uh, to get back to this point. I think confidence level has been a thing for him. Coming back off the ACL uh, last year, struggled with that, uh, but you know he worked extremely hard this year. I think he feels confident with his knee. I think he feels better, you know, confident catching the ball. Uh, so that's you know one issue. You've got to catch the ball as a receiver, and he's had some issues with drops. Uh, but, you know, he's got speed. And for him to come out there and make the play on the post, which was, a, you know, kind of a double move, and then, the, you know, the play on the quick slant off a run play, you know, to get the end zone and catch that in tight coverage uh, and hold on to it. It was, you know, it was a, it was a bullet and he caught it. And uh, really, really proud of him. And then to get Ty in there and, and have him come back and make that catch, that was the same play we'd ran earlier uh, where he dropped that one in, in the corner of the end zone. And so to get him in there and get him some action is good. Dante obviously is a young guy that's, uh, you know, been very, very productive for us. But with Nico Hall, he didn't dress. He's down. Um, you know, uh, Ajon Vivens has been down. Two guys that have played before and have veterans, they're, they're down with injuries. Brennan Fulton's down. Uh, so to get those guys to come on in the receiving core has been huge. And, you know, we've been playing more – Playing more 12 personnel and 21 personnel. There hadn't been a lot of three three wide receiver sets like you've seen in the years past just because our depth at receiver. Did you get a chance to watch much on Bellows? I did not I did not see it. Uh, uh, I did uh, I saw it when I got home and turned on the NFL network uh, seven seven for one fifty or seven, something like that. Uh, I saw actually saw uh, one play. Zach Janzik had his TV on the one over the shoulder catch. Uh, I saw that, and then later I saw the you know one we were running over the middle. But then I saw Preston had a touchdown on uh, a route in the back of the end zone. It'd be, I looked for BC to have any catches. I looked it up. I didn't see. I don't know if he was. I don't know if he was active or not. And then I looked for Dawkins to see if he got. It. So I, I mean, I check. I mean, every, you know, I check all the guys I coached at the other place. I check. Uh, you know, how our guys did and, you know, I haven't got around to it yet, but I usually shoot them out of text and, you know, congratulations. I saw the end of the, you know, the uh, Detroit-Arizona game, you know, the Janzics are big Michigan fans and we had family night last night and he had told me they were up 17 nothing or 24 something, I don't remember, and then we turned it on there at the end and I saw him come back and, and, and tie it up with a two-point conversion. And then didn't see the end of it because we had a staff meeting. But uh, I know he had a good day, but I know he's probably disappointed they tied. So I, I, I try to watch all those guys, especially our guys here at CSU. Uh, I think that's good for, you know, our school uh, that, you know, I, that they're get a chance to go play college football, get a great education, and still can live out their dream of playing in the NFL. I mean, you just turn on the TV. You know, it's not just Colorado State. You see a group of five guys playing everywhere. Uh, and to be honest, I think the path might be a little easier if you, if, you, if you take that route. You got a chance to get more playing time. You get a chance to grow more as a player, and you're not sitting on the bench as much. Are you starting to see any of your wide receivers start to take that, that step towards, like, a Michael Gallup, any, anyone like that? Uh, you know, I think Warren Jackson has that, you know, has that ability because of his size and is kind of taking on that I'll be the number one receiver. I know Dante might have more yards, but, you know, Warren's got more catches and more targets and more true – passing concepts. So I would say it was Warren where Dante's kind of been a guy that we've used in every role. Uh, so, you know, Warren would be, you know, the guy for the guy for me. But he's done a great job of just doing what we ask. You know, he hadn't he hadn't come out there you know, expecting to be Michael Gallup or Rashard Higgins or uh, BC B C Johnson or Preston Williams. He's kinda, you know, I'm gonna do whatever it takes for for us to win, which has been a good thing. Yeah, I, you know, I, to be honest, I'm, you know, stuff. Some of the stuff we're doing right now is like, you know, I should have done more of this stuff with Dietrich Clark. Uh, you know, Dietrich was probably more of a running back type guy, where Dante can do a little bit more in space than than Dietrich. You know, Don, Dietrich was bigger and thicker. Uh, you know, Dante's a threat to at receiver, where Dietrich became that at the end of his end of his career. When he got here, you know, he's an option quarterback at Eastern Arizona. 
and you know was a little bit raw running routes, but he ended up that last year helping us in the slot run some routes. Well, that was going to be my next question is because he's a guy you're going to have for four years as opposed to two. How much can you maybe see his role increasing and being able to find more ways to utilize him? Well, I mean, well, I ain't worried about next year, Kelly. I'm worried about this week, and I'm going to find ways to get him the ball this week. That's, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm we're focusing on today and, 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 and getting it, but, you're, you know, you're always trying to find talent and improve your talent. That's your job as a coach to, to continue to prove guys for this year. I mean, you got, you know, you got Jalen Hurst as a guy. You got, you know, this a, a freshman receiver that's been out with a shoulder. Uh, injury that we're trying to get back and who I believe has got some talent. So you still might see, you know, a lot of these guys this year. You know, that's our goal right now is trying to focus on this year. You talked about all the different things you can do, Dante, Marvin, all the speed guys. But how much does Colin Hill's decision-making make it easier to, to do all the different things? Well, I've been really, really impressed with Colin. I mean, he is, you know, we've hit probably hit more check downs in these first two games and we've hit, you know, Definitely more than we had last year, you know, probably in the last two years, and they've been for big plays. I mean, you know, the first check down uh, the other night was – the other afternoon was third and 12. It was the third progression. He went down to Marvin. He made a guy miss. The other pass to Marvin out of the backfield, it was a hot. You know, he was hot to the weak side, and he knew he was hot. He gave it to Marvin. You know, that's where he had to go with the ball, even though it was uh, – I believe it was third and 10 right there. He had to go there. And, Marvin made his guy miss and score. Uh, happened a couple times in CU where he had to check it down to Marvin because they covered guys and ended up getting a first down. So uh, I think it's a big credit, you know, to Colin and knowing where to go with the ball and then a credit to our back getting out and getting where he's supposed to be. Uh, sometimes that's a lot more to do with it than, than the quarterback is the back going through his protections and getting out where he's supposed to be in the proper spot for spacing. And uh, Marvin's done a good job with that. Hey, Bob, you got anything? Uh, yeah, I got a few here. Hey, hey Coach, how you doing? You were talking to me last year? Yeah, I remember, Bob. Hey, been here a Southern accent. Um, hey, uh, uh, Chad just announced Nick Stark was going to start the quarterback. Not a surprise, but it'll be his first start for him in three games. Kind of, what's your reaction to that? Well, I mean, I, I think I said earlier that uh, – you know, watching the game, I thought Stark will play pretty good and was really efficient in, in the game. Uh, had a couple balls I thought that should have been caught. Uh, looked calm running the offense. So it wasn't a surprise to me uh, when he made that decision. And I'm sure, you know, sometimes it's trying to jumpstart, you know, your offense. But, you know, I don't know really the ins and outs of it. I know we're going to prepare for both guys because uh, both guys have played this year and, and get ready to go. And, and you were saying earlier um, – that you hadn't watched much film last year because it was such a rough year. Chad said he thinks you guys are a lot better team than you were at this time last year. Do, do, do you agree with that? And if so, why do you think that is? Well, I hope so. We were <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I just think the way the guys have been. I mean, one, we're more, we're older. Uh, we've got a we've got a. I don't want to say veteran quarterback, but we got an older quarterback that's been in this system for a long time. He's not a veteran in terms of starting games, but. You know, when you've got a quarterback uh, that understands what you're trying to do, I think that 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 helps everything go. Uh, I think we got more depth on defense uh, than we had last year, and I think the guys are playing hard. Uh, I think they're playing hard. We obviously we played hard that that night against Arkansas, and you know things went our way, uh, and able to have a really really good fourth quarter uh, against them. But you know, I mean. I, you never know what's going to happen this week, whether we win or lose or whatever. But I do think, you know, we're ahead of where we were last year at this time. Uh, Dante, right, a freshman. He looks like he's having a big impact catching and running. Kind of what kind of player is he and how, how big has his, his, his impact been on your offense? Uh, he's a guy that has uh, kind of injected uh, some explosive plays into our offense uh, from the receiver position, from, you know, being a speed sweep guy. Uh, he's not a big guy, but he's been very productive for us all camp uh, leading up to the first game of the season, and then he's been productive in the first two. I don't know Collins had some knee injuries he's overcome. I, I don't, he didn't play but a handful of snaps last year against the Hawks, but um, what kind of player is he and, and what kind of leader is he for your, for your offense now? Well, I, first of all, I'd, I'd start with the, the leader. I think he's grown into that position uh, of being a leader. I think he feels more comfortable now because he truly is – 
you know, the starting quarterback. Uh, he's doing a good job of taking ownership of the team. You know, the last time he was truly the starting quarterback, he was a true freshman. Uh, and sometimes you're just trying to figure out, you know, which which way the strength of the formation is and where do I go with it. I mean, you're, you're struggling to just get to snap sometimes. And now uh, he's a fourth-year junior, uh, and he is, you know, he's the number one guy. I think he feels more comfortable in that role. I think the guys respect him because of what he's been through, two ACL surgeries and how hard he's worked and the type of person he is. As far as a quarterback, uh, I think he's a guy that's got, you know, all the tools. He's got ability to see downfield. Uh, he can go through his progression. He can make all the throws. Um, you know, mobility, he's not, uh, you know, he's not the fleetest uh, on foot, but uh, he does do a good job in the pocket of moving around, checking the ball down, and scrambling when need be. Uh, year seven and one against Arkansas, I believe, is an assist that at Georgia and then last year. Um, that's a pretty nice record. <laughs> SEC team, what? What do you think about that? Does that give you? Uh, has some good players, you know. <laughs> that helps. Uh, good players help. Uh, you know, I mean, I can think of some of those games that were that were nail biters of, of and just play, guys making plays. I got one guy on my staff, my receivers coach, Joe Cox. Uh, he had a decent day when he came down there before. But uh, you know, those are different times. I mean, we played. All, I'm at Colorado State. We played them last year. Be honest, we were lucky to win that game. Uh, you know, played really, really good the fourth quarter and and found a way to win the ball game. Uh, but uh, you know, it's hard to it's hard to we get in that situation again on the road. I, we're not really going to have a chance to win, so we're going to have to play better this this year. And I know you got asked about having a lot of guys from the south, and I, I'm sure that has to do with your your ties to Georgia. But um, yeah, what's that like having uh, so many, you know, you don't think of a Western team having that many guys from Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, Texas. Well, what's that been like to be able to, to have so many guys from kind of a football mad area, you know, come all the way out to Colorado State? And I guess is that just your contacts with the high school coaches from your days at Georgia? Yeah, it's got a lot to do with relationships of, uh, you know, where you've been and, and who you know. Recruiting is, you know, coaches want to, and their parents want to send their, send their players are their sons of someone you know they they know or they trust, and a lot of people I know are in the South. So people that are going to vouch for me, uh, my character, are you know some coaches and people in the community in those areas, and that helps a lot of times in recruiting. Uh, and then you know we're kind of like everybody else in the country. Where does everybody go? They go to California, Texas, Florida, Georgia, and uh, you know just contacts there have helped us get some. And then when we get guys on visits, you know they see how beautiful Colorado is and Fort Collins and. You know, I've, I've said this a thousand times, but I usually get this isn't what I was expecting when I came on this trip. Uh, and, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's a little secret out here. And so as long as we can, we can stop all these people that are moving from Colorado, just let the players move out here and I'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I know this is kind of an old story in Colorado, but I read this summer that you turned down a $100,000 raise that was, you know, you're written into your contract. I don't know if I've ever heard of a coach or anybody, for that matter, doing that. I guess what 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 led you to decide to do that? And I don't know, did you have to get your wife's permission? Or, <laughs> or how, how does that work? Uh, you know, we I, I didn't I didn't think we lived up to the the, the the standard of the football team that I wanted here at Colorado State. Uh, and sometimes it's easy to, to come as you know a leader and point fingers and say we got to do this better, that better. You got to coach better. We got to play better. To, you know this position, which some of that might be all true. But I think the number one person that needs to be accountable is the head coach, and I want to show that accountability uh, to my coaches and my team, and just defer that raise and give it to our local media. That's who I gave it to. <laughs> <laughs> That part was a joke because they're sitting in front yeah, of me. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, 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 the Arkansas is coming off a rough game at Ole Miss. Um, you know, they kind of rattled a little bit at the end. They were down by 21. What are you expecting from them coming back home? Because even this early, they kind of got their backs against the wall a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, any, any, anybody you play, somebody's got their backs against the wall, they're going to come out fighting. And like I said earlier, this team, you look at the tape, uh, they're playing hard for 60 minutes. I mean, it's hard to win on the road, especially in the SEC. And, you know, I know the final was 31-17, but it's, it was actually a little bit closer than that. They get the one touchdown call back uh, for an eligible man downfield. Uh, had a couple turnovers uh, that cost them, had a couple drop passes. So, I mean, the final, you know, it looks like, hey, Ole Miss, you know, 
we had it in the bag the whole game, but I think there are a couple plays here or there that Arkansas is in that game uh, on the road. And, you know, so now they're coming back home. They're coming to their home stadium. Uh, and every time I've been to Arkansas, whether it's in Fayetteville or Little Rock, them fans are passionate. Uh, they're loud. Uh, they love their Razorbacks. And, you know, I'm going to expect nothing less when we go into Fayetteville to play you guys. Well, I mean, I, I, uh, you know, winning, I always tell these guys here, winning's good for team morale, losing's bad for team morale. So it was good to get a win. Uh, and sometimes you forget what it's like to win, you know, a ball game. And, uh, you know, we, we enjoyed the win. You know, we celebrate that win, and now we're going get, to get on to Arkansas. But, uh, you, you know, that's just, that's just one win in a season, and I think we got a lot to do as a football team. And, you know, we got a big task in front of us with, with playing Arkansas on the road. Uh, hey, Coach, that's all great. Anything else you want to say? No, I'm good, big man. All right, Bob, thanks. Okay, thanks. thanks. <laughs>